Basile the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Well, 24 Nigerians have filed a lawsuit against the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, for failing to give them and other 7 million Nigerians adequate time and opportunity to complete their voter registration after they have carried out registration online. The plaintiffs who are suing for themselves and on behalf of 7 million other Nigerians are seeking to complete the registration process so they can obtain their permanent voter's card, the PVCs, and exercise their right to vote. INEC had recently revealed that out of 10 million 480, 87,972 Nigerians who carried out their pre-registration online. Only 3 million 400, only 3 million 444,378 completed the process at a physical center. It represents 32% of completed online registration. At the Federal High Court in Abuja, the plaintiffs are seeking an order of mandamus to direct and compel INEC to reactivate its continuous voter registration exercise to allow the plaintiffs to complete their registration and collect their permanent voters card, that's a PVC. They're also arguing that the inability to complete the registration is entirely due to factors outside of their control. We have uh, Justice Mwegu, uh, he's a legal practitioner, human rights, lawyer right here in Lagos. Thanks for joining us. Unfortunately, we're able to have uh, Professor Sokoye. We haven't been able to get him to answer his phone. Good morning. Good morning. So my question is, what, what do you make of the situation? I mean, uh, 24 Nigerians who have actually filed a suit against INEC and uh, the reasons that they have given is that they have not been allowed to complete their voter's registration. I mean, the circumstances surrounding it is outside of their control. <laughs> well, I, I, I will say that we are actually progressing. And in democracy, this is the kind of thing you get, is the kind of thing you see. Uh, for me, I think uh, it was a good, uh, a good attempt to. So I, I align myself with uh, those people that are going to come to seek redress. The law or the rule is that at any time your right is about to be infringed on or has been infringed on or likely to be infringed on, you can go to court to seek for a redress. So it is okay. It is a good one in a good direction. All right. Uh, uh, Justice Uwegu, um, you have said it's a, you know, it's a, it's a good law in, the good, in a good direction, a good step rather in a good direction. Um, but um, what about the, the fact that the Independent National Electoral Commission have given their reasons? And what they've said is that they can't spend their entire time between now and the election working on the voters' register. They need to also have some time to complete the process and prepare for the election ahead. This is a com uh, an explanation that has been given several times by INEC, especially through his, uh, uh, the National Commissioner of Information and Voter Education who has been here on this program several times. Um, does that not make any, any, any meaning to, to you? No, it's not as if it does not make any meaning. But the truth is this. You see, INEC ought to have started this whole process on time. Nothing stops INEC to have started this thing earlier before the time they did. Knowing the antecedents of Nigeria, and also knowing that we have a huge population in this country. So as far as I'm concerned, it is, do, it, it, it is their duty to make sure that things are done appropriately. In fact, like I keep on saying that things, things, things are done when it's supposed to be done. And it's supposed to, to a large extent, satisfy every Nigerian that is legible to vote. So yes, Alec has come up with one excuse or the other. But should they continue giving excuses at every given time? And the answer is no. Now, if that is not done, do you know how many Nigerians that will be disfranchised in the forthcoming election? We're supposed to have gone past this. In fact, if the INEX server 
or every other thing has been put in place. We won't be having some of these problems. They launched uh, 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 what the, uh, a technology outfit for a station and all the rest. But as I speak to you, most of these I mediums mean, are not working. Nigerians get frustrated on daily basis. Some of Nigerians that are even doing it manually, visiting the INEC offices, and just go to various INEC offices and see the frustration. But, 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 but ju Justice Uwebu, uh, will you agree? Will you agree with those who are saying that, you know, a lot of Nigerians waited till the last minute to rush to go do the fiscal capturing. INEC began this exercise, this continuous voter registration, on the, in June 2021. June 2021 and finished just uh, some weeks ago. That's about one year. Um, one year, not enough for people to complete their fiscal capturing. Well, the truth is, it is, it is immaterial whether people went late. The most important thing is that before the uh, end of the exercise, people trooped out in March. So the question we should be asking ourselves is, this, do INEC actually have the capacity, the manpower capacity to have satisfied every Nigerian that come out to come and do this exercise? And the answer is no. So that is just the thing, whether, whether it was a rush hour or not, becomes immaterial. They ought to have envisioned this, know that Nigeria, that's why I say that Nigeria is a, we have our peculiarity. People always come out, like you say, during the rush hour and all that, but that doesn't make meaning. I think it's supposed to have been prepared for this, knowing that this is definitely how it's going to be. I visited one of the centers, uh, uh, INEC centers in Imo State, you know, where? And what I saw, my brother, I, 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 I almost shed tears that day. Come and see how uh, security agents, we are bullying people. People who go to INEC office from 6 a.m. at times, 5 a.m. and stay there till, 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 till 7 p.m. Still, nothing is being done. I know what I'm saying. I witnessed this myself. I tried to move around and monitor some of these things. So let us not blame Nigerians. They must have the capacity to do the needful. Well, so one would be wondering if the capacity to do, need, do the needful, it's also time bound. I mean, at a time where, I mean, speaking with Festus Okoye, he's also mentioned um, that there were times prior to, you know, the closing of the process entirely, where you would have just one person who would show up. And so what if, you know, the capacity of INEC uh, that they have is, is, is within, you know, the time frame to ensure that you have a time, not that you have, um, you know, people rushing and pressuring the entire process and system. Now, we are still saying the same thing. If people were rushing and pressuring the entire system, what is INEC supposed to have done? Is it not to add up to their capacity or manpower? Yeah, I mean, for me, they don't have any excuse. At times, you go to an INEC office, you see only, only one or two, or, or, two, or two officials there attending to, to, to hundreds of people. What are we saying? I, I, I thought by now we should have done, gone past some of these things by now. I mean, it, it, it is so unfortunate. I witnessed it personally. I'm not saying what somebody told me. I said I witnessed it personally. In fact, if you want me to be specific, I visited the INEC office at Imo State over the municipal council, inside the Oweri municipal council. What I saw, I, I, I was shedding tears that day. Uh, 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 Barista, I, I when, when, when was this? That was about, uh, about two months ago. So we're looking at um, June 2000 or July 2022. Yeah, this, this, this year. Yeah, this year. Okay, so it means, it means, it means that, so were you part of those who um, started the process online and then went to now do the fiscal capturing or was your no, entire no, no, process? No, I, 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 I didn't do online. I, I, I personally went there to do my own earlier and north and other. But everybody will not be justice. All right, so were, were you attended to justice? Were you attended to? We were able to get your vote. Yes, account. I was attended to, but I lost. So to have to tell you that it wasn't also easy for me. All right. So, so what you saw, it wasn't also justice. Easy for what me. you saw was the it was a last minute surge, um, which we are talking about, <laughs> which uh, INEC has been talking about. This process has been on since June two thousand and twenty one, and ended in July two thousand and twenty two. You went there 
in July 2022. And um, I mean, if, for instance, if, if, if you go to the banks, if you were even the banks that have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, twenty people, it will still be the same. Um, so you saw the last minute rush. Well, I, I like what I said, I saw the last minute rush, but I want to tell you something. You see, most times we should stop making excuses for one reason or the other. As far as I'm concerned, like I've said it and I still maintain it, I need up to have known that the, that there's going to be last minute rush and all that, and they ought to have been prepared for it. That is what I'm saying. For example, if you get to some of these centers, at times they will tell you, well, well like for example, there were some centers that were opened outside their normal office. And like, for example, let me give you an example. That, that was a center that was, because that, that period I was telling you, I, I traveled to the East. You see, there was a center that was open somewhere at the Imo State University, you know, uh, for people to come and do the needful and all that. But most times when you go there, you don't see the officials. And it wasn't only there. Some other areas, the same thing happened. And you know, in Nigeria, most times when people are saddled with the responsibility of serving the public, you know, I don't know the way they reason, especially within that period, the way they behave, the way they talk, and even the manner they address people becomes a different thing entirely because they feel you know them, uh, they feel you need them. And they forgot that this exercise is for the benefit of everybody, including INEC officials themselves. They are all Nigerians. So this issue of early, um, late, late hour rush or no late hour rush, for me, it is immaterial. I mean, I... We're hoping that, you know, we're looking at the judgment and the statement or the case that's been filed and the fact that they are seeking, uh, you, you know, uh, asking that they be given an opportunity to complete the voter registration. They are saying that whatever happened is out of their control. Do you believe that this is entirely out of their control? I mean, we know that there's been uh, education awareness, some sort of campaign that's been going on by INEC, you know. Uh, would you say that this is really because, I mean, this particular statement is not very clear, so vague. When you say it's out of your control, they haven't really stated exactly what they mean by out of their control. What factors are we talking about here now? Uh, unfortunately, well, well, we can't have Festus. I mean, Festus is not here, so he can actually answer to some of this. But do you think that this entirely, you know, the fault of INEC that seven million persons plus or thereabout have not been able to complete, you know, the registration process. Well, I see that when when they say out of their control, I have to agree with them because now there was an exercise and people trooped out in mass. Forget whether it was early hour rush or late hour rush. But the most important is that people were on ground to do this exercise, and INEC was not able to attend to them. So it was out of their, it was not their own fault because they were on ground as at this time. So as far as I'm concerned, and again, we are talking about education, enlightenment, and all the rest. Let me ask you a question: Where has our national orientation agencies? Where, where have they gone to sleep? In every local government in Nigeria, there is enough of the National Orientation Agency, trying to reach, you know, the localities, the villages, to give people orientation and all the rest. Are they still working till today? The answer is no. How many people today in Nigeria? You see, when we are talking about some of these things, let us leave the elites out of it. Let's talk about the masses. The masses, the poor masses in our localities, the market women, the granola sellers and all the rest. Do they have knowledge of some? We still said this is certain since last year. But I, I tell you, I'm a Nigerian. I live here. I know what I'm saying. That many people may not have been aware of this issue of enlightenment education you're talking about. What is the medium for you to get this enlightenment or this education? Is it that the television uh, or the uh, radio station? Barrister, Barrister, I, I, I don't know if I, I, I am allowed to disagree with you <laughs> that many people were not aware. Well, you, you this, have your opinion. The, you yes, can. yes, yes. Because this, so. this procedure has been on um, before now, from June 2021 up until July 2021. What I, what I may say, and I want you to, to, um, to critique this, is that people began to be hopeful, to say, ah, 
we're, we're not going to vote, we're not interested in this election. Now we're interested because of somebody from a part of the country who, is, um, <laughs> who stands a chance, then people walk up. Some will say that's the gospel truth, including those who say they don't believe in elections, they don't believe if want elections to hold in their part of the country, you know, woke up and said, oh, wait, oh, we have a chance. Let's go and register. It was too little, too late. Now they're blaming INEC. What do you say to that school of thought? Well, the truth is that I don't see it that way. My brother, the truth is, is like I said, you're a Nigerian, I'm a Nigerian, we all live in Nigeria. Um, like you say, you're entitled to your opinion. No, it's Nigerian, a school of thought I'm just throwing at you to get your yeah, opinion. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's answering your opinion. question to that school of yeah, answering your, your, your question to that particular school of thought, I don't I don't agree to that. But listen, the, the truth is this. Nigerians are more politically conscious now than before. And the reason is because of what the present administration has taught Nigerians. In fact, they have opened the eyes of Nigerians. Today, every person in Nigeria has become a politically uh, motivated person. Nobody likes what is happening in the country. One way or the other, everybody is, is involved. Do you put on table because I'm involved? So directly or indirectly, we are all involved. So it's not a matter of because somebody came from one side of the country or the other side of the country. Is it, is it only people from that side of the country or side, that side of the region that are clamoring for this? The answer is no. So for me, I see it that Nigerians have become more conscious of their environment and the election now. Because what is happening in this country today, in this administration, has never happened in the history of Nigeria before. The poverty rate in this country now has gone that Nigerians no longer are no longer uh, 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 sure if they wake up the next morning and see food on their table. Who will be happy? So that is the truth. Forget about this school of thought or no school of thought. Those things are political gimmicks. Well, will we really say that they are political gimmicks? Because if you, if you look at it, it, it feels like Nigerians have always been in the culture. You have said it. You said that we have a style that is peculiar to us. I really don't understand what that means because it feels like uh, we're not always on the other side of doing the right things. We all are. I mean, you say that we're all part of the issue. We're all part of it. It affects everybody. But would you say that Nigerians have been acting the path of being politically aware. I mean, it's okay to say, hey, we're politically aware, we understand what's going on, but have they been really responsible with their actions as we head you know, towards the elections in 2023? And if you look at the economy generally, have Nigerians been taking responsibility you know, to ensure that we build this nation and move the country forward with their actions every other time, with little things as respecting the traffic light, and paying taxes <laughs> have nigerians you know lived you know up to the expectation have they been playing the part really or we're just waking up and we're saying hey we, we have a candidate i really don't know if that's the case but i'd like to share your thoughts on this one and do you think that this is the kind of energy with with this attitude because it's an attitude thing that you have said it feels like it's very peculiar to us it's our thing and so we're accepting it as a norm that we don't have regard for time including ceremonies i mean casual ceremonies that have no, you know, consequence. But how many times do people show up, you know, to um, their different meetings and what have you at the time that they're supposed to report to? These are the issues we're talking about. And that has trickled to affecting, you know, the entire registration process. We're hoping that they will be very detailed with the issue. So we have INEC also responding to it on the other hand. We understand that, you know, it's not an entirely perfect system, but we can't just shift the buck, you know, to one part. And then we, we, we think that that's okay. Well, as far as I'm concerned, we don't have a choice than to uh, uh, a sort of press on INEC to do the needful, to make sure that every Nigerian is satisfied. Let me tell you one thing. You know, we talked about peculiarity, has Nigerian been living up to their duties and all the rest. Yet I have to tell you the other truth. The problem we are having in this country today is that Nigerians, the people, the masses don't even trust the government because there is a disconnect between the government and the people. We say power belongs to the people, but in Nigeria, the power actually belongs to the people. In a country where the, the executive or the people in power 
do whatever they want or they feel they want to do without minding the public opinion, the general opinion, the totality of the interests of the people. What are we saying? We are all Nigerians. We see what is happening. You see, so let me tell you, when there is good governance, every citizen will comply. When the head is sick, definitely the whole body will be sick. But when the head is right, definitely the whole body will be right. So the disconnect is between the people and the government. And let me tell you, Nigerians are disappointed. And that is why this 2023, because of what has happened in the past few years in this administration, every Nigerian wants to be included now. That is what we call inclusive government. People want to, to be carried along. People want to know what is happening. Because, because the people... If the people are feeling disappointed. That is why you see this thing happening. Now, whether it is late hour rush or whatever, I've tried to debunk that as far as I'm concerned. There's nothing, for me, there's nothing like late, late hour rush. The issue is this, as at the time you're calling it late hour rush, people, we are people on ground to do what they are supposed to do or what they want to do. The answer is yes. So for me, we should look, we should go back and look at ourselves. The government should go back and look at themselves. Have they been able to get it right? Let me tell you. Another thing is this. We talk about the people, the people, the people. We don't talk about the responsibility of the government to the masses. We always talk about the responsibility of the masses to the government. What is the government doing for the masses that will energize them, that will interest them? You talked about paying taxes. You pay taxes. What is the taxes being used for? Every Nigerian is a stakeholder in this country because it is our common goal and our common resources that they are using to run this country. All right. You go, you come out. There's no light. There's nothing. Nothing is working. Nothing is functioning. So, so, and you keep on Barista, expecting yeah, to yeah. take from the people. Yeah, Justice Uwebu, let, Let's look at this. Um, also, the fact that because uh, you're a lawyer, so you're well poised to to answer this question. Um, uh, Alec started the the online you know processes of registration and all that for this CVR continuous voter registration uh, in June 2021. It proceeded then to now allow Nigerians to go physical capturing those who are online and also those who wanted to do their physical registration. In fact, those who started online should have had an advantage uh, because they're already ahead of the curve. The exercise ended in July, in June 2021, 22, and INEC was taken to court. The court ordered that the CVR be extended to July 2022, from June to July, which, uh, to which INEC complied. Now, having had a court decision saying INEC extend the CVR to July 2022 instead of July 2021, stretch it to 2020, July, June 2022, stretch it to July 2022. Um, having complied with this, can a court, I want you to give me a legal opinion now, can a court order a further extension? Of course, the court, the court has the powers to order a further extension, looking at the whole scenario vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the applicants' uh, prayers and maybe what the respondents who have to respond being its own um, reasons or the other bad. After all, the courts has the powers to undo what has been done. So okay. it is the law. Okay. So a, a, a further question for you. Um, how, how much longer will be necessary, in your opinion? One month? Two months? Three well, months? for me... The election uh, is in uh, February. Election, yeah. Yes, yeah. We, are, we are looking at February for the election. For me, for me... Um, it's just that um, we don't have, for me, I look at the whole scenario, at times we don't have a good technological system to manage some of this and look at what the beavers we, we are having, look at the card reader issue and all the rest. In fact, whatever you look at it, in the rural areas and all the rest, some of these things doesn't even work that side. And, other, and that is why for me, uh, if election is by February, if I make have the card, capacity, they can extend this till at least till November. It doesn't take anything. It, okay. it is an issue of technology. All right. So, so I, I, are, you, are you going to say without, without, without any doubt, you know, that um, all the 7 million persons, because of course we have a total 
of um, 12.2 million who've been newly registered, 12.2 million. But the 7 million are, are part of those who could not do the online and then go to the fiscal. But if you add the 3 million out of the 10 that did online, um, plus the 8 million plus that did fiscal, it becomes 12 million. Are you convinced, beyond reasonable doubt, that if we extend this to July, like you're asking for, that all these 7 uh, million plus uh, individuals, 7 million 43,594, will get their registration completed fiscally? Yes, I feel, I feel if I need to have the capacity and improve or increase the amount of power capacity, both technological and all the rest, it can be done. After all, some of these things are done... Uh, they are computerized. It's not supposed to be. So, so, uh, so, so uh, what, what, what if INEC is not able to give you that technological capacity they're looking for, and you can't get all of them done in in November? What do we do? Should we extend it further? Would you like to see that? No, no. You, you, you see, there must be an end to every exercise, even in court. There's, there's always an end to litigation. But what we are saying is that let them do. To an extent, let me tell you, I'm not expecting a hundred percent compliance or thereabouts. But does it not bother you before this time that we have about approximately about 200 million Nigerians or more than that? But at the end of the day, only about 50 million or thereabout will decide the fate of who rules the country. Does it not bother you? Okay, so so, so, so I'm, I'm sure it, it, it should bother any, any person, but you're saying that um, we, we can't continue this forever. Uh, you wanted to see the extended to, to November, D definitely, but you're not definitely. sure, you don't think but, everyone will get registered, but there should be a line. The, yes, at least. You see, when you talk about something, at least if you can get, okay, out of, out of about 12 million, uh, we have only about 3 million or, or close to 4 million. What percentage is it? Is it up to 70%? Is it up to 80%? So what are we talking about? Let me be realistic here. Justice Mwegbo, thank you so much. I mean, uh, we appreciate you and your time this morning on the show, but we have to go because we're really, really out of time. Thank you very much. It is my pleasure once more. All right, then, we look forward to sharing your thoughts on uh, several national issues. That's the size of it this morning. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll be looking at more interesting issues. Please stay with us.